I'm just going to do a quick video on this little church and I wanted to show you how to get this little stream here and you could do anything here. I just chose, chose the church because I thought it was really cute and I haven't used it yet. And then I'm also going to be using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. Okay, so I will tell you what numbers those are as we go. So let's get started. Make sure you have your watercolor paper. This is the Ranger paper in the Brilliant White. And then I have my stamps. So the stamps I'm using today are the um, the Church in the Structure Set, Watercolor Structure Set by Art Impressions. And then of course my Basics Flower and Foliage Set from Art Impressions. So I'll be using all of those. Um, so let's get going. I'm gonna first use the Green Gray of the Zig markers and just go ahead and ink all of this church stamp. These Zig markers are really, really wet, so you do want to adjust your water usage when you're using these. Um, just sort of keep that in mind because if you do use too much water, you're going to completely obliterate your lines and you don't want to do that. So go ahead and line this up with your paper. Stamp it down. So you've got something like that. Go ahead and take your brush. Now, I will link, once again, all of the basics information that I use on my watercolors in the information. It should be like up in this right-hand corner. So I will link that and you can check out that basics video. So what I'm gonna start doing here is just start pulling the color out of the lines like we do normally. And what I want to focus on is the sh uh, the shading areas on the front of this church. And then my the sun will actually be coming from this angle. So I'm going to leave this lighter and then the darker areas are going to be at the front. So go ahead and just start pulling the color out of those lines. Okay, so I'm actually in a hotel right now traveling and I don't have my palette with me so I'm going to use my Fiskars stamp press as my palette. You can see I have some colors on here already. But I'm going to be using now the uh, deep brown in the Zig and I'm going to just color that right onto my Fiskars press. Now the palette is obviously superior to the press. It's just when you don't have it, you gotta make do with what you have. So I'm going to start pulling the color from the palette or the press into my picture. And I'm just gonna start bringing that brown into the roof tops of this. Now I still wanna leave some highlights. That's really important. Never color everything in completely. It just will make it look flat. So we'll put this in, and then we'll pull some of this gray out from here. All right, same thing with my blue. This is the deep blue from the Zig, and I'm going to color this onto my press. And I'm just going to start putting this into the windows and the doorway of my church. And I'm gonna come back in and color layer some more after this dries, but for right now, that's pretty good. So now I'm gonna take my, that same blue, and the color a little bit more on there, and I'm gonna start my little stream. Okay, so like I said, you could put anything here. You could put a house, you could put, um, just some flowers are really pretty. You could do one of the barns. Um, there's a million things you could put there. So you're just going to do, you're going to start here and just do a line and then bring it around and back out. So this is not going to stop on um, our paper. So we're going to make it look like it's just a continual stream. It's just we're getting a glance. This We're just sort of seeing this part of nature. Okay, so we know the stream continues, but we're not going to see all that. So you're going to come in here and you're going to start widening this now. So that's going to start coming out. 
just like that, okay? So you've got this shape here and it's really thin here because that's far away. And as it gets closer, it's gonna get thicker. All right, so we're gonna take more of that water and just start pulling that color in. And you can kind of make it look like it's flowing like that if you want to. All right, so I'm using a really um, cool tone blue. If you wanted it to be in like a warmer climate, you could use more of a green tone or like a warmer tone, which is really pretty, like that tropical type green. You can use that. All right, so now we're just gonna continue. And you can see I, I left it lighter. So it graduated from dark and then it got lighter. And I did that because I want you to want you to see that it's just gonna continue. We're not gonna have an abrupt stop here of the stream, okay? So now I'm going to put in a green cloud behind my church, and that's to make my trees and everything behind look really lush. So I'm using mid-green, and I'm going to start putting this in just wherever I want um, taller trees. And that's gonna give this stream time to dry as well because we're gonna add some more stuff into that, but we need it to be dry first. So keep going all around. Now this doesn't need to be perfect. This can be really, really loose. All we want is just a backdrop for our trees. So it doesn't look like a single line of trees, but it looks like a dense um, sort of patch of trees around the, the church. All right, so now I'm gonna use my foliage from the foliage set. So you can see I'm only using that top half, and then I'm gonna use, um, ooh, I don't know what green this is. I've kind of wiped off the, I'll look that up and then I'll put it in the, as an annotation in the video so you can see. Um, so I'm just gonna color that onto my foliage. And you can see I just colored half of that. And I don't need a whole bunch of this. I just need enough to sort of make it look dense. Okay. I'm gonna keep coming around. Just like that. Put a couple more down in here. All right, so it always looks a little bit funky before you add the water, so don't judge your painting until you're finished. Don't critique anything yet because it always comes together at the end. And then when you add the water, it really blends everything out and it looks really good. Okay, so add your water. And you can see I'm just dabbing. Remember, we want to rest our hands on the on the table. It's a very ergonomic way of painting, but also we're using the side of the brush. We're transferring more water that way, and then we're saving our brush tip because we're not poking. Poking is a surefire way to get those really annoying bristles that just kind of poke out, and we don't want that. All right, so now I've got some trees in the background. Now that this blue is pretty much dry, we can come back in with our grass. So I'm gonna use the teeny tiny grass, and I'm gonna show you some perspective um, stuff on here too, because Art Impressions has made it really, really simple for you to do this and get the correct perspective. So you have the large grass, and that's for the forefront, so the foreground. That's going to be the closest part to you. That's why it's big. And then you have the little teeny tiny grass for the far away, the background. And then the same thing in the flower set. So you've got the daisy bunch, which are going to be close. And then the teeny tiny flowers, which are going to be far away. So they've taken care of all that perspective for you. And it makes it super simple to get depth in your watercolors. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. And I'm gonna use that same green that I used for the trees. And I'm gonna start just stamping in my teeny tiny grass. Remember, we wanna walk that grass so we get dark to light variation. And you don't have to do grass all the way across. You can just do it in kind of spurts here. And then I'm gonna come into the center, into this area, and put in some grass in here. 
okay, where the where it kind of bows around. And I want to make a horizon line as well, right where my trees are. And then that kind of makes them look like they're standing up, okay? So I've got a couple there. And then I'm going to take my jumbo grass, so I'm just going to switch stamps here. I'm going to take my jumbo grass, the big one, and I'm going to ink that. And I'm going to put these at the opening where the mouth is. So see, you can already see now this looks like it's like very close to us and those look like they're far away. And then same thing goes in here. And I'm just walking that grass. And you can already see that perspective, right? Because Art Impressions has made this really, really simple to use and it makes it look realistic like it's coming towards you, that creek is coming towards you. Okay, so I'm gonna take my water now and I'm gonna start pulling the grass color out of the lines, just like that. And it's okay if you got some of the grass into the stream, it doesn't matter, grass also grows in streams, right? Like on the, the edges or the bank. So don't worry about that. And we're gonna completely ignore this middle ground in here. So just leave that empty. And then I've got my big grass, the big jumbo grass in here. And this is all gonna come just like that. You can see now we're really getting that perspective to work for us. All right, now I'm gonna put in some flowers. And what I did for this one was I actually put in a yellow sort of cloud wherever I wanted my flowers and then I stamped over it with the orange. So we're gonna do the same thing so I can show you how I did that. I'm gonna put some yellow onto my press here. I really wish I had my Art Impressions palette because you can see it's really hard to see the actual color and the palette is really nice because it's white. And so you can see the true color on the palette without having to sort of guess what you're using. All right. And I'm gonna put my yellow in here, my little yellow clouds for my flowers. Okay, and then once that is drying, I'm gonna come back in to my church here and add some extra shadows. And I'm gonna do that using my deep blue, the same one that I used before on the windows and the door. And I'm gonna come back in with that color and just start putting in some darker shadows in here. that and do you see how that makes it really pop forward those highlights and then same thing with the actual church I'm going to take that green gray put that on my non-porous surface Fiskars and I'm going to come back in and darken up this front area and I can also use, since these are zig markers and they're really wet anyways, I can go straight on with the actual pen. Now you can't really do this with the Marvy or the Tombow because they're so concentrated. But with this one, you can come in and put your shadows straight in if you want an even darker look. So, so you can see how dark I got that. And then same thing under here, if I want to add a little bit more underneath, I can do that. All right, so now my yellow little clouds are pretty much dry. So let me come in here one more time with my windows and then I'm going to add my flowers. So you can see, got a 
nice dark area in there. Now let's add our flowers with my orange. I've got my orange here. This is um, bright, actually this is bright yellow. It looks like orange. So I'm just gonna start stamping those in. And you can see I'm using the daisy bunch, the big ones, right? I'm using the big ones where the big grass is. And then as I move back, I'm gonna be using the teeny tiny flowers for my background so that we can stay in perspective. Because we've got the teeny tiny grass back there, we need the teeny tiny flowers. Going wherever you want to. I love the blue and the orange together because they're complementary colors. They just look really great together. And then we'll put a few in here. So you've got something like that. And we'll go ahead and add our water to that and just dab a little bit. I don't go over the top with this. I just sort of lightly bring in some water. Remember those zig markers, they really, they're really wet. So when you start going, they go. All right, and then we'll put in a little bit of a sky. And I'm just gonna take my blue and really, really wash this out quite a bit. And then I'll come in with just a little bit of a wash of sky. Okay, and you can see I, I touched my church a little bit. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Put that wash in there. You can see it makes it look really multi-dimensional. Put that sky in. All right, so that is that. And make sure you always sign your work. So I'm actually gonna sign my work using the Marvy marker because it's got this really nice detailed tip. So I'm still gonna sign with that even though I use the Zig markers for my whole thing. And that is that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you try it at home. Take care. Have a great day.